So in this short video, we are going to be covering copyright and royalties on the recorded music side and how they are licensed and collected. We also have another video on our channel that describes this on the publishing side. And I would recommend that people from the industry, no matter where you sit on the publishing or recorded side, familiarize yourselves with both sides of the coin. So today we are going to be discussing the copyright, royalties, and licensing procedures for the recorded music side. We also have a video on our channel that describes this on the publishing side, and I would recommend that you check both videos out to learn how these two um, are collected and how therefore they will also be interacting. So if you watch the publishing video, you might already be familiar with the different types of copyright, but very briefly in the US, the type of copyright that is issued for a musical work or sound recording are the right to reproduce that um, piece of work, the right to create derivatives, so things like covers, remixes, etc., the right to distribute copies, to perform publicly, to perform by means of digital audio transmission, or to display publicly. So looking at this in terms of the recorded music side, uh, I've you know, removed the ones that are specific to compositions here, so things like sheet music, cover versions, etc. Um, but something that I did want to call out here that I didn't mention on the publishing video is that when you're talking about samples, if you are sampling something, um, you are taking the actual recording and uh, integrating the original recording into your new derivative work somehow. And so on the composition side, whether something is sampled or interpolated, it's kind of the same thing. But when you're looking at the recordings side only, interpolation doesn't count. And interpolation is when somebody takes the musical idea and re-records it, so it's not your original recording. Um, and so you, as the performer or the owner of the master recording, wouldn't have a right um, inherent within that interpolation. Um, so you also then obviously have the right to sell CDs. You also have public performances by means of things like radio and in venues and shops, um, DJ performances, places where the original recording is being performed and not just live music per se. Um, and then things like the artwork are still things that are inherent within the um, product, the recorded music product, and um, those can be displayed publicly, but you would need a license. So similar to how I broke this down in the publishing video, I want to talk now about how these mechanical performance or sync rights might exist within the recorded music side. So first of all, mechanical, not really relevant, but the reproduction right, if you think about it that way, still very relevant. So the right to reproduce that CD, create those derivative um, versions, and distribute copies are sort of within that reproduction right. You also then have performances. So the, the CD could be performed within a retail shop, and they need to pay for a license to, that, to do that. Um, you also can have your recording synchronized to moving picture, and both the recording and the composition have to be licensed and cleared together to go behind a moving picture. Um, and these moving pictures and videos <laughs> are um, performed publicly either in a movie theater, on television, on YouTube, etc. And so they also kind of touch some of the other pieces as well. And then there is, you know, the concept of being able to um, display publicly something that is a, as intangible as an audio recording. And when you think about things like the credits, the album artwork, and that kind of thing. So when we think about who is collecting what, um, similar to the publishing side, there are a number of different organizations that cover each of these reprodu reproduction, performance, or synchronization rights. And the first that many people think of is your label. So if you're assigned to a label or you act as your own label, um, you will be responsible for things like the reproduction, performance, and synchronization rights. Um, but you may be um, really kind of giving those rights over to someone else who is your distributor. Um, and that distributor is taking the reproduction um, uh, the you know kind of created CDs that you've manufactured or the digital downloads that you want to send out to DSPs and they're distributing them out on your behalf 
collecting the payments made either for the sale of those uh, physical items or downloads um, or the, um, the money that you get from the streaming. And then they're kind of passing that back to the label who passes it back to you. You then also have someone like a neighboring rights organization. So in the UK, as an example, PPL, and they will be collecting the performance um, of those, uh, you know, whether they're again, like CDs at a, at a retail shop or um, having a license to play radio or things like that. And they are collecting on that and sending that back to the performer and the, the master recording owner. Now they're not collecting on the publishing side for the composers. And so if you wanna learn more about how the composers get compensated and who is responsible for the public performance of that, please check out our video that covers that on our channel. So for those watching that are you know, acting as your own label or perhaps you are self-distributed, you will be familiar with putting your music through a distributor. And this is an example of CD Baby and they ask for information that you would expect, like when is your release date? What is your record label? What are your genres? And you also will have the opportunity to request that a UPC uh, or an EAN number if you're outside of North America, which is the product code is issued. If it's the very first time this product has been released, you're gonna wanna request one from your distributor if this product has been released before and maybe you're changing distributors or um, you're, you've gotten your rights back and now you need to distribute it for the very first time, um, but it already has a product code and you're distributing the exact same product, you might already have a UPC. Um, so you may not need to request one, but that your distributor will ask you if you need one issued. You also will be asked um, if you already have an ISRC, which is the unique code for your master recordings, or if you need that to be assigned. If it's the very first time you're ever releasing this master recording or that it has ever been released, um, you will need to have an ISRC assigned. If it's already been released on, let's say it was already a single and now you're releasing it on an album, um, you will already have an ISRC for that master. And it's important if you want to consolidate all of your streaming data easily that you use that same ISRC when you're issuing, when you're releasing through a, um, a new product for the first time. You also, in some um, distributors, will be asked if you would like to sign up for publishing administration. Um, so in the case of CD Baby Publishing, and there are other distributors that have a similar uh, service, you can go through and add songwriter information. You can explain whether people are composers or lyricists, or the role of the composer. You can put the percentages. Um, you can you know, talk about who the publishers are and so forth. So um, it's important, I think, uh, to be aware of that side of things and really be careful what you're doing there and, and talk to your other composers and you know make sure you have all of the right information if you're going to go the publishing route as well. Um, and again, you can check out the video and learn more about how that works on our channel. So um, once you have released your song, um, you want to also register with the Neighboring Rights Society for collection. And in this case, um, I'm using a screenshot of Sound Exchange in the US as just a sort of exemplar of some of the metadata that might be asked of you when you're going off for collection. Um, so we have an ISRC that's being asked for. We have an ISWC as an optional field. That's the unique work code. I think that as much information as you can provide, the better. So great to collect all of this. Um, you'll be asked the P line. So who has the phonographic copyright? Um, and that's usually the label. And you can check on um, what has been sent to, for example, Spotify in the copyright section. They'll have a C and a P line, and you can find out there what is the P line for that recording. Um, you also will be asked things like, what is the percentage of the recording that you're claiming? Um, is the basis of your claim, in this case, that you are the performer or that you are the master owner and that kind of information. I hope this overview of the copyright, royalties, and licensing for recorded music was useful. Please check out the other content on our channel where we go into more depth on publishing and also how everything fits together and how metadata can help make you more money. So if you have any questions or comments or ideas, please email us at info at or check us out on the web at 
verify.media. Thanks and have a great day.